This video is supported by Brilliant.org. So if you add all this up, what that means is that the Model 3 will be bringing in $266 million of revenue with $53 million of profit every week. Hey guys, this is Ben Solens with Teslanomics, the show where we explore sustainable tech from the lens of data. We use the data to identify the story instead of our opinions or our emotions. We try to be objective as best we can. So if you're into that kind of thing, consider subscribing. So this story starts back quite a while ago when the first Model 3 was ever unveiled. This was March 31st of 2016. And at the event, we got to see the car and learn a lot more about it. However, we didn't really get to learn everything about the car. To start, we didn't know the range, options, or price besides the base $35,000 model. They did, however, announce that a ludicrous version of the car would be made available. In typical Tesla fashion, this was in a tweet from Elon in response to a question. Fast forward to July of 2017, and we finally get the specs on the Model 3 at the handover event in Fremont. Except not really. We didn't really get all of the specs that we wanted. While they did announce some of the basic specs at the event, we still didn't know about the all-wheel drive or performance models. That was until just recently when Elon tweeted out these details, and days later, early reservation holders received invites to configure them. And this is why I built the calculator, since many of you haven't received your invite to configure yet, but are interested in what the price may be. And further, the calculator goes beyond that, beyond just the price of the vehicle, looking at things like your loan options and insurance and charging rates and all those kind of things. So this is why I did this. Now, if you're unfamiliar with that, let's do a quick walkthrough of the calculator just so you have some context here. So here on teslanomics.co, I have this Model 3 cost calculator, which you can find from the menu right there. And when you go through it, you basically start out choosing your options. So it's defaulted to the current first production run, which includes the long range battery, and then the premium upgrade, which are required. Then you can choose autopilot if you want. And here is the new addition, the all wheel drive and or performance. And the way these are priced is that in order to get the performance version, you have to get the all wheel drive version, which comes out to an additional $29,000. And here's a link to the tweet from Elon about that. Now, also when you do that, it will zero out the cost of the features here. So notice right now, when I click on Midnight Silver Metallic, it adds a thousand. If I click on performance, it's still gonna say that, but when we go to the next step here, uh, it's going to zero that out. So if I get rid of autopilot, you can go down and see that it's now $78,000. So even though it shows the $1,000 there, it, it doesn't really add it on. And then same with the wheels. They're 20 inch sport wheels, which look similar to these are included. I don't have an official image yet, so I'm gonna wait on that. Then you punch in your finance. The dock fees is a thousand bucks. The tax rate is depending on where you are. Also, it should default to the currency. You can change that out as well. Now, from there, you enter your loan information. I've defaulted to some of the common values you may see, a five-year term, a 3.25 interest rate, which is what Tesla's currently offering. So from there on, you just enter the data. You go down to figure out your charging based on how much you drive and you know the style of, of driving you have, slow, moderate, or fast, and then the cost of electricity. And finally, Finally, you get to the last step where you enter your insurance. Um, I defaulted to $120 in the US, which is kind of high. Uh, it varies, of course. There's so many factors in insurance, so it's impossible to you know, figure that out for you. And then incentives. So if you have something like, uh, you know, we have in California, um, plus the federal, you get a $10,000 off, essentially. So from there, you can click see results. And on here, it'll break it all down for you. So you can see that in this scenario, the Model 3 Performance Edition would cost $1,600 a month. Now that includes the $1,400 a month payment, plus the charging cost, plus insurance, giving you the total here of 16, 31 and 89 cents. Then you kind of break it down with fees, incentives and all that. So it isn't perfect, but this should give you a really good estimate about it. So this is what the calculator is. And when I built this, I also put a tracking token in there. I'm sorry. It's it's not the creepy Facebook Mark Zuckerberg kind of tracking. It basically just logs whatever you selected. And the reason it does that is so I can analyze it like we're doing right now or like we're about to and see what people chose because I think it's really insightful. When you ask people what would they do, they are biased in their answers versus when you just give them a tool like this and just see the behavior, it's a very different uh, scenario. And there's a lot of social science behind the re that reasoning. 
So that was the idea. Now, when I started analyzing this data, I thought that it would be similar to what I had seen before, where a small percentage of people were opting for these things, and most people were sticking with the basic configuration, but it didn't turn out that way when I first looked at it. Now, the question I started with was, how many people are actually gonna buy the Performance Model 3? And if you price it all out, if you fully spec it out, you're over $90,000 for, the slim down, watered down version of a Model S, in my opinion. I know some of you uh, will disagree with that. But anyways, uh, before I dig in, I, I do need to, to add one caveat here, is that a lot of the results that you're gonna see were because I told people about these new options. And so I assume there is some bias here that they were going there specifically to look at those. So let's dive in here and see what the data is trying to tell us. The first question was how many people actually submitted the form? Uh, here we have, I'm looking at basically everybody that submitted the online form and it was over 15,312 submissions. Now that's not unique people, that's just how many times people submitted it. Now of those, we had 7,493 that didn't choose any of the all-wheel drive options, then 6,866 that chose all-wheel drive and 953 that chose performance. From there, if you kind of look at that from a percentage standpoint, that's 48.94%, almost 50% of people didn't choose any of these, 44, almost 45% chose all-wheel drive, and just over 6% chose performance. So this is kind of the breakdown of, you know, you could extrapolate this and think, this is what people may order. Now, there's likely that a lot of people are waiting on all-wheel drive, and that's why you see such a high number here. But if you read a lot of the stuff online, and you just pay attention to the community, this this actually kind of matches up. Not a lot of people are looking for performance, but a lot of folks are looking for the all wheel drive, especially folks living in colder climates. So if we look at just performance, I wanted to see what is the average price. And in order to do that, I needed to understand what options they chose. So if you look at those that selected the performance option, 42, almost 43% of them said that they would choose the EAP, which is the Enhanced Autopilot, which is commonly just referred to as Autopilot. It's, it's what Tesla currently offers. Then 35.57%, almost 36% of people said they would buy the full self-driving option, which is an additional $3,000. And then 21% said that they wouldn't get anything at all. And that also is surprising because I think most people buying a Tesla are gonna get some form of autopilot. So if you look at driving style, I thought this was another interesting one, 74% left it at sport, which is the default. Then 21, almost 22% said they drive fast, or I'm calling it ludicrous here, and barely anybody at all, just over 4% said that they drive in chill or slow. So very interesting there, the, the distribution. I thought that more people would be driving ludicrous. In terms of color, in case you're interested, black was the number one color. Now remember, any of the paint options do come in for free with it, so there's no no additional cost, unlike if you just chose all-wheel drive, you have to pay additionally for wheels and everything else. So you can look at it there, you know, kind of the, the breakdown. I'm surprised, I'm guessing a lot of people just left it as the default. So this brings the average price for a Performance Model 3 based on the data we have to $82,145. Now let's do this for all-wheel drive. All-wheel drive, similarly, we're starting out with the same numbers in terms of how many people selected it. To recall, it was almost 45% of the respondents. Within there, this is the color breakdown. Again, black was the highest one. Again, I think it's just a matter. Maybe you guys just love how mine looks, who knows, but I think they're just sort of leaving it as the default. Now, in this case, you do have to pay more for additional colors. Now, if we look at autopilot, you can see that it actually was quite different than the uh, the other option with the performance. So 53.19% selecting the enhanced autopilot 31 saying no almost 32 percent that is that is shocking to me i wonder if any of the stuff in the media has really kind of biased people towards not buying autopilot um, i do think that if you don't drive uh, long distances on you know safe highways it's probably not entirely necessary uh if, you know so if it's an added cost you know people are probably opting for all-wheel drive instead of autopilot which wouldn't be surprised to me at all and then if you look at the driving style 83 percent said sport so definitely a different driving driver getting the performance version versus the all-wheel drive. Now, if you wanna compare these side by side, you can do it like this, to where on the performance side, 
pretty similar on the chill 4.2 versus 4.3. Ludicrous is where you see a completely big gap between 21.83% of the performance uh, people versus 12.55 on the all wheel drive people. So that's a big jump. And then, you know, that, that shakes out in the sport options there. So people that are choosing the performance option drive fast, not a big surprise. Um, there at all. Now the autopilot one is where I thought there was something interesting because the performance folks are opting for more full self-driving. And I would think if you're a performance you know, focused driver, you probably don't want any autopilot, right? You don't like, I imagine when I get my Roadster, I'm, I don't want the thing to have autopilot at all. Like I wanna drive it, that's the point of it. So this was kind of interesting to me. Um, still the, the a number of people not choosing any autopilot option here, the uh, between the all wheel drive and them, uh, and the performance is, is really high. I'm, I'm pretty surprised by that. I, I just kind of assumed most people um, would be getting that. So this brings the all wheel drive average price to just over $55,000, almost $56,000. $55,930. So this got me thinking though, what does this mean for Tesla? What does it mean for their bottom line? And if we take the numbers I have there and you know, let's use them because it is some data that we have that was collected uh, somewhat objectively and we apply the margins that we know that they're going for, we can, we can kind of back into how much money they're gonna be making as a result of these new options. So let's look at that now. So what I have here essentially is a table of data and I'm just gonna walk through this kind of line by line that way we don't lose sight of what it is. So uh, the first one that we have is the performance model. The average price I put in at 82,145, which you just learned. The margin, if we're assuming 20%, they said they're aiming for 25. Tesla overestimates a lot. Let's call it 20 to be conservative. Um, and 6.2% of them selecting this option means if they're producing 5,000 cars a week, 311 of them will be this performance option, which brings in $25.5 million of revenue and $5 million of profit or margin. For the all wheel drive version, since the price is lower, 55,930, but the percent of them being made is almost 45%. The revenue per week from this is $125 million and the margin is just 25 million. So a full 5X over the performance model. Then you have the long range, and this is the current option, the only one that they're currently making. I honestly don't know if they're gonna make the standard uh, until next year, so we'll see about that. Maybe it'll happen this year, but for right now, um, this is where they'll be uh, coming around July if those uh, that Model Model 3 delivery ramp you know, hits that mark in July as Elon predicted and as I and many others are forecasting. Um, then this one, the standard kind of <laughs> version of the Model 3, we will be bringing in 115 million point seven dollars and the uh, and $23 million of profit. So you can see the all wheel drive option here uh, is, is significantly more in terms of what it's bringing in. And there's a lot of people that are selecting it and it's, it's, it's gonna mean a lot. So if you add all this up, what that means is that the Model 3 will be bringing in $266 million of revenue with $53 million of profit every week. This is once they hit the 5,000 cars per week, and this is assuming a 20% profit margin. So of course, those numbers won't be exactly right, but that is what we have to go off, and I think just for benchmarking, it's a fair way to approach it. So I'm curious what you guys think about this. I had fun building this calculator, and I hope you enjoyed using it. Every day, thousands more people use it, and I'm gonna revisit this down the road. And of course, I'll be coming up with new tools and things to help you understand what's going on with Tesla from a more analytical and data-driven standpoint instead of what you may see out there in other media sources. Now, I created this calculator by hand by using basic web technologies. Now, when I added this logging mechanism, I actually used a different language called PHP, which allows me to do things like create files, and in this case, actually send data up to the Amazon cloud to store it. Now, I've got a lot of emails asking how to do this, how you could get started on something like this, and I'm excited today to say that I have an answer for you. Really Brilliant.org helps you master concepts in math, science, and engineering by solving fun, challenging problems, which helps you get up to speed on topics like these quickly in an interactive format. For example, I think their course on computer science fundamentals is a great place to start. I went through it recently, and although I've been doing this for years, I felt I learned a few new things and was reminded of a few others, uh, specifically the idea of arrays and kind of how data is structured. That way, when you're actually working with the data, you can put it 
it in the right place and kind of make sense of it later on. It's really important to get it right up front before you have to try to deal with that mess later. Anyone that's worked in tech will tell you that. Now, we all learn using different methods, which is why I found Brilliant to be cool because not only they have examples and syntax, but diagrams, quizzes, and a community of folks learning similar topics to you. So if you'd like to brush up on your math and logic problems or start for the first time, go to brilliant.org slash teslanomics and sign up for free. Also, the first 200 people that use that link can get up to 20% off on their annual subscription. Perhaps you'll even learn new and exciting ways to free the data. So thanks for watching and I'll see you guys back here in the next one.